国际的视角，权威的声音，欢迎收看《第一声音》，我是魏迪。在信息爆炸、消费膨胀的年代，日常生活中的选择比比皆是，而品牌呢，往往会成为消费者衡量的重要标准。越来越多的企业也渐渐意识到品牌所蕴含的巨大价值。在全世界最大的新兴市场，拥有全世界最广大的消费群体，中国品牌如何抓住这个天时地利人和的绝佳机会呢？本期栏目，我们将对话华通名略全球 Brands 总监 Peter Walsh， 听一下他是如何阐释中国品牌成长之路的。连续第二年，华通名略在北京推出了二零一一年度最具价值中国品牌五十强榜单。中国移动以五百三十六点零七亿美元的品牌价值再度位居榜首。尽管二零一一年世界经济大环境不佳，但上榜的中国品牌总价值仍强势增长百分之十六，达到了三千二百五十亿美元。中外品牌的差距正在缩小，这对外国品牌如何保持竞争力形成了挑战。然而，中国企业在品牌建设方面还有很长的路要走，提高中国品牌在国外消费者中的认知度便是其中的关键所在。As we all know, WPP is a world leader for advertisement and marketing services. So, can you introduce your criteria of your 50 top 50 companies, Chinese brands? The criteria to enter the rankings are three:、uh, the brand's finances must be publicly quoted, the brand must be a mainland China brand, and also it must be in、uh, positive earnings. Can you share with us anything fresh to this year's campaign? Yes, indeed. What's really interesting this year is that、uh, the power of the brand continues to develop in China. The value, for example, of the top 50 brands this year is worth 16% more than it was last year,、uh, and we see several trends coming through:、uh, great trust in these brands, brands which are driving innovation. Uh, and brands which also have great ideals that they're holding up something that's meaningfully different for their consumers. To what extent do you think the ranking will affect the industries, companies, or brands? At the heart of the rankings is a brand being able to differentiate itself and to create a great part of its value from what the brand contributes. And that's something special that we measure within these rankings, and no other rankings in the world do that. So that's a very important ingredient. We know China that、uh, is really playing an increasing role in the global stage, but still on the manufacturing level nowadays. So,、um, what's your opinion? That what do you think the timeline will、uh, China play an innovative stage in its development? Well, first of all, you can see that the development of brands within China has been absolutely rapid. You look at the、uh, top 50 this year; six of the brands didn't even exist 10 years ago. So the branding and the performance of those brands is is rising absolutely rapidly. Now, it's certainly true that only about five percent of the value of The China brands in the top 50 comes from overseas revenues, so there's a long way to go for China to、uh, promote its brands overseas. And one of the main reasons is that the brands, China brands, are just broadly unknown. A few, few exceptions: Lenovo, maybe Haier, possibly Jingdao Beer. But in fact, we did a survey recently, as part to follow on from the brand study,、uh, across six major markets outside China. And we found that of all the consumers we asked, 83% couldn't name a single China brand. So there's a lot of work to do for brands to grow their presence outside mainland China. So according to your study, what do people outside world or what kind of、uh, what international companies view Chinese brands nowadays? I think. From the outside point of view and brands' point of view, it's brands which look on China as a market to go into, rather than worrying about brands coming outwards. Although, again, there was a survey done recently, which、uh, showed that nowadays
um, about only about 20% of marketers uh, are not worried about China brands. Uh, and that was only four or five years ago. That was 45% were really worried about it. So increasingly, there is a concern, if you like, from the outside that China will come and be successful at branding. Now, I think that's a negative way to look at it. In fact, uh, Chinese brands which have something different to offer, something quality, something special, uh, are going to do very well as long as they get known outside their home market. If led you to pick one Chinese brand to set up as an example um, to their counterparts, so which brand would you pick and uh, what will be the reason? Actually, there are several ways in which a brand can be strong. Innovation, of course. Uh, Sina Weibo has done very, very well this year in terms of innovating dramatically and upsurging the value of that brand. Uh, and then, of course, you've got things like tradition. Uh, Yunnan Bio, for example, uses heritage uh, dramatically well to establish what is so different and special about that brand. And uh, what kind of a role do you think a uh, Chinese brand will play in Chinese developing progress? Well, increasingly, uh, very much further forward because uh, the consumers, as the more consumers come on stream, as the country gets richer, um, choice gets wider. And so brand is one way in which consumers have a better way to be able to choose or, if you like, to reduce their choices because the consumers hate choosing. Uh, and brand helps them not have to choose so much because they know they've made the right decision because of what a brand stands for. What's the key learnings from your top 50 most valuable Chinese companies, uh, 50 uh, most valuable brands this year? Well, it is that uh, innovation is crucial, uh, that trust and the quality uh, and all of those tied into something or that sticks, if you like, to a brand that makes sure that it is different from its competitors. The other thing is, of course, uh, using media to be able to communicate what that difference is uh, and increasingly making sure that you do actually deliver on your promise. Because particularly now with the internet media being so fast and strong and so much used across the population, that uh, if you do anything wrong, it'll be found out absolutely straight away. So being transparent uh, and being true to what you set out to do is extremely important. As a developing country, we know that China owns uh, both challenges and opportunities. So, what's your opinion that uh, Chinese brands, or P, uh, Chinese brands, opportunities and uh, challenges for Chinese brand continual growth? Um, if you look at uh, the current uh, value of these top 50, for example, um, they account for approximately 5% of the current GDP of China. Um, and we've seen that the value of those brands in turn is growing. So what you can see is that clearly future brands and increasing uh, brand success is clearly going to be very important for China and for the wealth of China. So brands, in fact, are a tremendous asset for any company to have. If you look at uh, the MSCI uh, index over the last 15, 16 months, uh, it has shown a decline of around about 6%. Whereas if you look at the top 50 brands and the share prices of those brands, they have increased by over 20%. So you can see brand is a fabulous investment. Anything you recommend to Chinese brand? I would be incredibly confident if I was a Chinese brand in that uh, I've got a, a country uh, full of innovation, full of invention, uh, a, a massive market in which to be able to uh, market in all sorts of different ways, different tiers and different uh, targets. And so all of the happening and the marketing that's occurring in China at the moment is incredibly impressive. And so being able to export that and to change uh, the face of China with success coming out of here, I think bodes very well indeed. 刚才采访的是华通明略全球Brands总监Peter Walsh。以上就是本期栏目的全部内容。国际的视角,权威的声音。感谢收看第一声音。我们下周同一时间再会。